Welcome to Talk to Al Jazeera. I'm Andrew Simmons in the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa. And with me is the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Melez Zenawi. He's been in power here since 1991. That's longer than the man he helped to overthrow, the dictator Colonel Mengistu. Most recently, he's been in the headlines for his invasion of Somalia with the support of the United States. Mr. Zanawi, thank you for joining us. I'll start with the issue of Somalia. You invaded nearly three months ago. You wanted to get your troops out quickly. At least two-thirds of them are still there. Are you in a dangerous quagmire? Well, I think we should get the facts uh, straight first. We did not invade Somalia. We were invited by the duly constituted government of Somalia, internationally recognized government of Somalia, to assist them in uh, averting the threat of terrorism. We did so. Um, we are not in a quagmire now. We have uh, completed our first phase of withdrawal. We'll complete our second phase of withdrawal in a few days' time. And uh, things are improving in Somalia. But you said that you would be out in a matter of weeks, and you said that two months ago. And the security situation is not good. It's patently clear that it's not good. Uh, we had plans to withdraw in weeks. Uh, but in the meantime, the African Union decided to send troops to Somalia. And we therefore decided to uh, synchronize our withdrawal with the deployment of African Union troops. Now that the first contingent of the African Union troops is in place, we'll go ahead with our second phase of uh, our withdrawal. And as the uh, uh, African Union troops uh, consolidate, uh, we will completely uh, withdraw. Of course, there are uh, challenges in Mogadishu, uh, but the rest of Somalia is very stable. Uh, and even in the case of Mogadishu, uh, taking into consideration the fact that this is a city of 2.2 million people, uh, awash with guns, uh, the type of security challenge we currently face are not all that unexpected or alarming. Ugandans are coming under attack frequently, your own troops likewise. Every other day is not an exaggeration. You've hardly brought peace to Somalia, have you? If one assumes Somalia is equal to Mogadishu, then of course that could be uh, a correct assessment. But I believe Somali uh, Somalia is not equal to Mogadishu. The rest of Somalia is absolutely stable. And even in Mogadishu, while there are these challenges, these are not insurmountable challenges. Let's look at this point. Um, you'd expect it's more support from the international community and the African Union. And that hasn't been forthcoming in, on the scale you you wanted. So I'll put to you, you fought a proxy war on behalf of the US. Don't you regret it now? We did not fight a proxy war on, the part on behalf of the United States. Indeed, the United States was very ambivalent about our intervention. Once we intervened, of course, the United States and much of the international community was supportive but in the initial phase, before we intervened, everybody, including the United States, was warning us that we might walk into a trap and a quagmire and that we shouldn't, uh, that we should uh, think twice before, before taking steps. That's the first point that I want to stress. Secondly, the African Union has been extremely helpful. It has deployed its forces within a few months. That's much more than what the United Nations is capable but of But there isn't doing. anything like the numbers committed to this operation that is needed, surely? We have 1,500 Ugandan troops in the thick of it. Uh, they That's knew nothing compared with the situation with respect. I don't think it's the numbers that are going to make the one, the, uh, the, 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 that are going to do the trick. It's going to be the reconciliation process among the Somalis, uh, which will hopefully marginalize the uh, terrorist elements and therefore reduce the threat they pose to manageable proportions. And I think that's going ahead. Before moving on to that point, I'd like to just pick up on your assertion that the US were not directly involved with the run-up to this war. Because in a leaked UN document referred to a meeting around June 2006 
between top brass military from Ethiopia and the US in which a series of options were looked at. Now this has been documented. Now do you deny that there wasn't active discussion about a military operation with the US assistance and the US backing uh, months and months before the actual hostilities took place? Months and months before the actual hostilities took place. Well, June I 2006. I That's nearly six months. I publicly stated that we will take military steps unless the terrorists change their ways. And this public information was shared with anybody who was interested in our view, not just the Americans. But there was no military planning. But the point is, do you deny that the US were not involved actively with your forces no. months, months before? No. You don't deny it? They were not involved at all, except in the form of sharing intelligence, which we have done for years before the military intervention in Somalia. But sharing intelligence can mean a number of things, can't it? It can be a, a, a description of formulating options. And no. We planned our military operation. We executed it without the support, military support of anybody, without the financial support of anybody. I want to pick up on the point you made about terrorists. The Islamic courts, it would be ludicrous to suggest that the Islamic courts was wholly com comprised of what some describe as extremists. Many, many moderates amongst them, and they did bring peace to Somalia for the first time in a long time. So how do you assess your war objectives in hindsight? Well, um, I agree with you that uh, all those involved with the Islamic courts were not hardcore terrorists. Many of them were rank and file um, uh, clan militia members. Uh, but there were hardcore terrorists in the leadership, including some who were trained in Afghanistan. Now, this assertion that they brought peace to Mogadishu uh, in some ways is very similar to assertions by some that um, Hitler, for example, uh, instilled, uh, enforced peace and stability in Germany after the turmoil of the Weimar Republic. Uh, but the, the way he did it was such that it would be obnoxious to everybody and could not be sustained. That's the same thing. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, establishment of peace uh, in Mogadishu by the uh, jihadists is very similar. They did it by flogging women, by uh, preventing people from going about in their daily lives in the normal civilized way. Uh, and it could not have ever been sustained. Do you think then that an ordinary Somali, their view towards Ethiopians is that you're an occupying power? How do you address the Somali public after what's happened? And that is not uh, the um, overwhelming, the opinion of the overwhelming majority of people in Somalia. But does it have to be a majority? Uh, it ha had it been the case, we would not have rooted out the Islamists in four days with a very limited contingent. And uh, we would have had uh, fire burning throughout Somalia. That is not the case. Now clearly, there are people in Somalia who very strongly object to our intervention. Uh, and we respect the opinion of some of them. And we have no intention of staying there or remaking Somalia in our image. We went there to support the transitional government. We have done most of the job. We are withdrawing most of our troops. And as soon as we uh, complete our job, and as soon as the African Union is firmly established in Somalia, we'll move out completely. And what happens if the situation deteriorates even more at that point? Well. All we can do is to try and help the Somalis resolve their own problem. We cannot resolve it on their behalf. We can only support them. If our support is not enough, then it would be very unfortunate. Uh, we are not going to be sucked in to a Somali civil war.
you're sure about that? Absolutely. We're now going to take a break. Uh, stay with us on Talk to Al Jazeera with Ethiopian Prime Minister Menezidawi. Thank you.